fragrances. I love fragrances that show no modernity whatsoever. From a bygone era, old world reminds me of a time well before my own. And in this video, I'm going to be featuring five dated fragrances that I think are absolutely marvelous. Yes, I'm doing a dated fragrances video. So I'll get this started. Um, these fragrances are not going to appeal to those who are uncomfortable about any kind of scent that doesn't have some of the modern tropes or accords that we've been used to for at least the past 20 to 30 years. Hell, all of these fragrances were released, I believe, before the 1920s or 30s. Um, we'll start off with the first one. And this is Woods of Windsor, Eau de Toilette for Men. Uh, God knows when this came out. Um, I know that Woods of Windsor is an apothecary that has been around since the 1700s. Um, and this one probably was released no later than the mid 20th century. So this one is... Reminds me somewhat of uh, Dunhill for Men but even more antiquated than that. It is uh, focused around clove and nutmeg with a very lemony top, and it dries down to a really good oak moss accord. And let me tell you, um, this seems to be out of stock really frequently, but when it is in stock, it's like 20 to 25 bucks for uh, 100 mil. It is not expensive at all. Uh, but it smells like it's great quality for what it is, and it just smells really proper, um, really a noble fragrance um, that belies its price. And there's a review on Fragrantica that I love by uh, this gentleman, and I would like to proceed to read it uh, to you folks. So I'm going to bring it up right now. Um, and he sums it up. Uh, quite nicely, and uh, it's actually what caught my attention to this particular fragrance. So just bear with me as this loads up here. So it is by a reviewer um, by the name of Le Nose. He hasn't really reviewed lately, and he says, and I quote, Bloody good! Woods of Windsor positively oozes old-fashioned British tradition. This is Wellies, Barber, Range Rover weakens in the Cotswolds. Yes, this just might be the quintessential rural English fragrance. Eminently stiff upper lip in a crumpled tweedy way. Toodle pip. <laughs> I, I just was really struck by that and I had to try it out. And thankfully, at one point, I noticed that there were several for sale. I don't know if it's still in production. I couldn't find it for a long time, and then all of a sudden they started coming up again, and they were everywhere, and now I can't really find them anymore. But that's Woods of Windsor, complete with a an exposed crimp um, atomizer, so they, uh, they don't really try to gussy it up. It's just unadorned and ungussied up Woods of Windsor for men eau de toilette. The next one that I have is from Dorsey, and Dorsey is a fragrance house with a lot of history. It was actually founded in the early 20th century, about 1908. This is probably one of their first fragrances. This is Etiquette Bleu, Etiquette Bleu. And um, the house itself was resurrected in the 2000s, and a lot of these uh, were re-released, reformulated. Um, or the original formula was used with some adjustments, um, maybe to meet some modern tastes or to meet some regulations. But this one is 
it, it centers around resins like myrrh and apopinax. It's very citrusy, um, orangey. Uh, I have it still sprayed on this arm. It smells like like the orange rinds are interacting with the myrrh and the apopinax. Um, there's a rosewood note. It's woody. It's a little vanillic. Um, so it is sort of like a proper amber, a very old world kind of amber, though. This predates things like Shalimar <laughs> by a few decades, at least. And uh, it's a wonderful wear. It's, it's the type of amber that you could wear in warmer weather. It's a, a somewhat sheer, uh, but it has that... Um, bygone feel to it. Um, it's just a really great uh, experience. And uh, even though this, I think, has been discontinued, I don't think this is still in production. You can still find it for about 60 or $70. So that's Etiquette Bleu from Dorsey. Check that out if you can. Next... Uh, is Geo F. Trumper Milk of Flowers. So many people know about the sandalwood and how it is similar to Egoiste. Um, that's really popular. Other people love Eucharist. So do I. Um, but this is one that is uh, under the radar. It is uh, not very well known. And uh, this is a very clovey fragrance. Like, this is the cloviest, cloviest. <laughs> this is the most clove heavy fragrance that I have um, without having something like uh, Serge Noir by Serge Lutin, which for a clove lover like me, that is over the top. I can't even handle that. So it it reaches that precipice, that that limit that I can tolerate and I can still enjoy. As the name suggests, there is sort of like a lactonic element to it, but not heavily so. What I find more so is that there is this kind of ripe bilang ilang that happens in the heart. Um, and there's also a myrtle note in this, like myrtle leaf. So myrtle is, is a camphoraceous, sweet, herbaceous sort of note. It's similar to eucalyptus, however, it doesn't have quite that overly camphoraceous feel that can lean into Vaporub vibes. Um, Myrtle is a little bit more aromatic and accessible, and I like the way that it interacts with the clove in this. Um, but this, for being such a, a clovey scent, um, it might not be accessible to somebody who is more accustomed to modern fragrances, but I absolutely adore it. It really sings on the skin. Like it just smells like such a, such a well done clove accord. Um, it's just delightful. So if you are a huge fan of cloves like me and you want a fragrance that really highlights it, then check out Milk of Flowers. You can't go wrong with it. It's a good one. Next in line, I have this one from Penhaligans. This is Cornubia. Um, according to my research, this was released in 1910. I would say that this is in a similar vein to Le Bleu, which it was released in 1912, so this predates it. Interesting. Um, it also kind of reminds me of a more unisex Cacharel Lulu, interestingly enough, and that was released in 1987. So this has neroli, there's a, a, a freesia note, so it's a very like linalool, um, bright kind of vibe sort of at the top, but that, that it, it combines with this heliotrope and orange blossom. It's floral, but it's also vanillic and musky. It's a little dirtier and drier than, say, Le Bleu or even Lulu, if you can imagine. Um, it's sillage for days. It is one of the most potent penhaligans that I've ever 
experienced. Um, and it dries down kind of woody, a little almost, um, almost sort of like a, like a spicy woody kind of dry down. Um, there are elements of it that also kind of remind me of Habanita. Perhaps that, that is just the, you know, heliotrope accord in it. I love heliotrope. I'm a huge fan of it. I don't know what it is about it, but on my skin, it just smells wonderful. It soothes me. Um, but here it, it's, it's really surrounded by a lot of interesting things, uh, a lot of parts and motion and, I think that this has been discontinued. I'm pretty certain of it. However, even though the prices seem to be high on um, eBay as of this video, which this may change pretty quickly, um, depending upon how many in stock are left. But if you go to FragranceNet, this is still selling um, testers. Testers are selling the this size. 3.4 ounces for $63, $64. So grab it while you can if you're really interested in this. And that's a really good price for Penhaligans. Now, lastly, um, we have Santa Maria Novella, which uh, one of my favorite houses. Talk about old world. This is the, Some of their fragrances are antiquated. They're like alien to young noses or even older noses. They, some of the compositions allegedly were uh, formulated in the 17th century, 18th century. This one in particular, Mariciala, was um, supposedly released in 1828. And this one is a level up for fragheads. So if you want to be challenged and engrossed in a new experience and fragrance, if you just want something that doesn't quite smell like anything else <laughs> at all, um, this this one would be one that you'd want to, to get your nose on. It's camphorous, medicinal, it's bitter, it's herbal, it's astringent, and that might sound terrifying to some of you. But of course, being the person that I am, all of that attracts me. Like I want that kind of experience. I want something that is so from another time and age um, that speaks to a different sensibility altogether. And that is what is delivered fruit through Mariciala. Um, I find it somewhat meditative and comforting. There's very interesting elements here. Like, you know, there's cedar, but it's sort of like cedar with all of its rawness and pure and impurities. It's like a, it's like the wood hasn't been cleaned. It's from an old tree. Um, there is like patchouli in this. There's oak moss. But there's all of these like medicinal herbs that I detect in this. It's really bizarre. There, you know, the notes pyramid doesn't show any of this. Um, it's just such an uncommon scent. Um, I, I just absolutely love it. I actually should just spray it right now. And, and show you my response each time I smell it, so. Wow. I don't know what it is about this. It's like... It definitely doesn't smell like what we know in modernity to be perfume. <laughs> Yet here it is. <laughs> it is a fragrance for people to wear, and I wear it, and I love to wear it. Yeah, it's a really special one. It's it's not for everyone. It, it's for those who like to experience something out of the realm of what is accessible and modern. And I mean modern is like even, you know, in the past 50, 50 years, 60 years. Yeah, it's, it's really special stuff. So that's Mara Ciala um, from Santa Maria Novella. And that's the fifth of my five. There you have it. Dated fragrances. I absolutely love them. I don't think dated should be necessarily a negative description for a fragrance. Uh, I kind of want to reclaim it as something that is desirable, um, if, for me at least, in fragrance. Something that 
it's kind of like if you enjoy wearing clothes from a certain age and you don't have any qualms about it, you don't have any concerns about what other people think, that you're free to express yourself in a way that is most meaningful and gratifying to you. Um, and that extends to other things, maybe choosing to make certain recipes from another time and age. Um, so culinary stuff, um, it, you know, it can go on. I mean, there's literature from back in the day, you know, and I know we could get into all the things of like what's potentially problematic about art and literature and so on and so forth. But as long as we understand it within its context, we can enjoy those things um, as they are. And uh, yeah, I really thought it was a great, a great idea to do a dated video um, and to bring light to some of these fragrances. And, and maybe this could be an inspiration for people to return to some of these approaches and styles and fragrance. Maybe the tap is starting to run dry on all the different um, accords and concepts and themes that we're finding in fragrance, and we should uh, draw from the past a little bit more for inspiration. So, something to think about. Well, thank you very much for tuning into this video. If you enjoy this content, please subscribe, like the video if you can, and uh, click on the bell and uh, by doing so, you will uh, receive notifications of further videos. And uh, thank you so much. Take care.